Here's a BCS 725 two-wheel tractor from about 1990. It's given many years of dependable service, but recently the transmission started misbehaving, or more specifically the shifter started misbehaving. The problem is that uh, one can move the shifter, but uh, you don't necessarily get the gear you select. When you let out on the clutch, it may not engage at all or uh, it might engage but not necessarily the gear you selected likewise in neutral when you let out on the clutch it may go into gear not a good situation so the problem seems to be that here we have a shift linkage connects to a rod that goes across and on that rod there's a lever that moves as the rod rotates and that uh, moves the slider inside uh, I can gather that from looking at uh, exploded parts diagrams and the uh, workshop manual available on the BCS website. Uh, but I've never had one of these apart and don't know exactly what to expect, but we'll learn together uh, what's going on. The workshop manual says in order to remove this back cover from the transmission, I should first remove the engine and then the handlebars and then the shift quadrant hitch and bracketry here and then I can take off the back cover this is a Kohler Magnum 8 the process should be similar for other engines I have to disconnect the cable for uh, shutting off the engine I have to disconnect the throttle cable looks like four bolts hold the engine to the transmission and in my case I have an extra wire here that uh, is for a hour meter and tachometer. The control cables are loose now. It took a uh, flathead screwdriver and a quarter inch wrench for the throttle and for the off switch that was a six millimeter socket. I loosened the four bolts holding the engine but before I tried to pull the uh, engine off or remove the bolts, I reread the workshop manual and it says remove the nuts. So I should probably be removing these nuts back here. Uh, that's a 13 millimeter, so uh, I've retightened the 14 millimeter bolts here and I'm going to loosen the 13 millimeter nuts in this area. You can see the uh, engine's been removed after taking the 13 millimeter nuts off. Now I've already removed most of the cables. I still have to remove the clutch cable and most 725's don't have brakes but this one's got the optional brake kit as with larger tractors so I have to remove that and of course larger tractors would also need the differential cable removed. All of the cables are loose now, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, remove the pins and washers that are holding on the uh, shifter rod and the PTO rod, and I'll remove the rods and these articulating joints. Turns out there's just enough room to get the wrenches in there, so uh, loosening the handlebar shouldn't be too hard other than maybe catching it before it falls. Well, that was probably the hardest part so far. I had to rotate it about 70 degrees. Couldn't do 90 because then it interfered here. Uh, but at whatever this angle is, about 70, I was able to uh, tap 
the bolt out with a drift punch and light taps on a hammer. And uh, by the way, that's a 19 millimeter bolt and nut. All right, I'm going to try uh, pulling this off once more. Move this uh, selector to the center neutral there. And it's off. And of course, the ball and spring flew. I do have the ball in my hand already. Got to find the spring. So after looking around a bit, I found the spring didn't go flying. Only the ball went flying, and I saw that and found it right away. But the uh, washer and spring are still in here. There we go. Maybe there's not a washer, but the spring anyway is right there. Now I'll remove the pin, castellated nut, take this fork off, and remove these uh, two nuts so I can take this uh, hitch off. 19 millimeter nut came off easily once the pin's out. Uh, underneath, there's a, there was a couple of washers, and then the fork just lifted right off. Uh, after I get everything cleaned up for reassembly, I'll have to remember to grease that uh, area in between. Now I need to loosen a couple of nuts underneath the hitch here, and these two on the side. And it looks like then I can take this hitch off as well as uh, this thing here. Okay, so I got my 13 millimeter socket ready, and give it a try. Washers are off. And there comes apart. You can see I've removed the wheels and given it a very thorough cleaning. I've taken the PTO cover off and removed as much of the grease as I could to see what's going on. I think now if I drive out these two pins, I should be able to slide this out and remove this uh, lever and this PTO slider, and I think then I could take off the rear cover. I've just driven out the two spring pins there, and this rod has popped out about a quarter inch, and uh, hopefully I can slide it out. There's the ball. There's the lever and PTO. And one of the spring pins, the other one should be in the grease. After removing those parts, I cleared more grease out of the PTO area. Um, comment about the BCS workshop manual. It's been helpful, but uh, also somewhat frustrating because the pictures in it are often very bad, very dark, uh, hard, hard to discern what they're uh, labeling. Uh, so I hope this video is helpful for you if you're going to try something similar. I think at this point uh, I'm able to remove these six nuts and hopefully the rear cover will come off. I've loosened the six nuts here. I don't expect the cover to come off easily, uh, but I'm going to try to persuade it a little bit.
looks like it's beginning to separate. That's progress. And go ahead and take the nuts and washers off. Okay, a little more persuasion. I've been fighting it for a while and uh, can't get it more than perhaps a quarter of an inch uh, away from the housing. So rereading the shop manual, uh, I think one of those things that I couldn't make out from the picture that they were trying to describe is perhaps I need to remove this uh, cover on the side. Uh, so I'm going to try that next and we'll see if that helps. It was a struggle to get this flange off the side of the transmission. I finally had to do what I was trying not to do, which is uh, use a very skinny uh, screwdriver and uh, basically drive it in underneath the flange, which kind of damages the gasket a bit. But uh, it did quickly uh, push it off, and so I was able to remove that. Now I'll try again to get that rear cover off. Well, I've struggled with it for a while, and I certainly didn't want to put a screwdriver in here and pry on it, but I finally decided to give that a try. And I noticed that when I do that, the clutch is moving. And so I thought, well, maybe if I remove the clutch, that will help me pull this out. So that's what I'm going to try next. So here the clutch was removed from the other end. Uh, got a disc clutch instead of a comb clutch. Then the upper and lower shafts come out with the cover, so good thing I didn't try to use a puller to get the cover off. That would have uh, messed things up pretty bad. But uh, now it's apart, and we can look inside to see what needs fixing. With the cover removed, we can see the two uh, pins here are backed out. They're not flush with that face like they should be and so when the shifter moves uh, as long as there's no um, re restriction it, it rotates freely but when it encounters something then the uh, this can rotate on the shaft you see and that is not good so those pins need to be driven in, and I might just go with some new ones. Uh, I'll assess that yet. And then I'll have to clean up this uh, destroyed gasket. It took hours to get to this point, but the repair literally took less than a minute once I could get inside. Just one of those pins took a few taps to get in, the other one just one or two. Uh, yes, I could drive them out and replace them with new, but uh, I think this will be sufficient for many years to come. And by not driving them out, I don't run the risk of losing them through the oil passage holes, top or bottom.